welcome to Star Wars Spelt Out. This is your blocked up and sneezing host, Josh Chapman, speaking. I've Just as a heads up, I've got a little bit of a cold. Um, it's hay fever season here. It's springtime, so I've got the sniffles, of course. So I'm going to do my best not to uh, sniff into the microphone. But the best way to do that, if you've got a cold, is that you have your guest over the Skype so we can't catch anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've managed to keep him disease free. So live from Sydney on the Skype, it's Paul McWhorter. Hey, man. Hey, Josh. How are you going? Yeah, I'm all right. Apart from the well, apart, apart from, the, from that, uh, well, you know, as soon as spring hits, it's just it's a killer. The pollen hits, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm yeah. actually not too bad, but sometimes it just gets me, and then I just I'm just sniffing and sneezing and yeah, I, I've heard it because it gets pretty bad down in Melbourne as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's just, I don't know, all the trees come out and like I've got a house with a backyard now, so there's trees and stuff floating around everywhere and it's just, yeah. So I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll get we'll get through it. We'll get through it. It's it's not the end of the world. We can um, we, we can deal. And you just, uh, oh, we were just talking off air then and you just actually said that you're moving down to Melbourne soon. So I could have waited yeah. a few more weeks and just had you in the studio. Yeah, I know, right? But that's all right. Well, at, at the same time, who, who know, you know, how you never know how long the sickness can last. So you know yeah, that's right could be months yeah. still and i said like don't come over i'm still i'm still diseased exactly so it's, it's better we do it now it's better we do it now yeah that's right yeah <laughs> formalities out of the way you know yeah, like, well, exactly. I don't wanna... and who, who knows you might not want to come back you might be done like oh don't want to do that again <laughs> <laughs> we'll see we'll see we'll see, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we've only been gone um, for a couple of minutes we'll be right let's you know yeah, ease off, right. ease right. off. We've, got, we've got we've got two minutes in already so we're flying yeah exactly <laughs> Everything's all good. So Paul uh, himself is a podcaster as well, and uh, he's also a what I would call a connoisseur of comedy, especially Australian comedy. Oh, yeah, I, I, oh thank you. I, I, I like I do like that word. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I always sort of associate you sort of very similar to um, Mick McConnell, who's been on a couple of times as well. You're very yes. work in the, walk in the same zones. Walk yes, in the, good friend know, of good friend of mine. Circles. Good friend of mine. I do, I do like that man a lot. He's a good dude. He's a very good he's man. Got a, he's got a fantastic voice for broadcasting too. Mick, he does. He? he does. Well, actually, it was funny when I was listening to uh, to, to a couple of episodes of Star Wars Spelt Out. I was thinking that you actually sound a lot like Kyron Waitley. So there you go, a professional broadcaster who you sound oh, like. Oh, really? So there you oh, go. Wow. There I you go. I, I don't even know who that is. Ah, <laughs> who is well, he? So, so uh, he used to do breakfast. Uh, sorry, uh, weekends. And he also, he's he's uh, Reese Nicholson's husband or fiance. Oh, I'm not okay. sure. So, so there's All the right, comedy well, connection as well. I there definitely know Reese Nicholson. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Shout yeah, out there you go. Listening. Was he a Triple J guy? Uh, yes, yes, he was. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yep. See, I yep. was overseas for ten years, so I That's missed right. a big chunk of Triple J. You know how, it, like, you know, I I went back to the days of Triple J going regional. So I I grew up in you know the, in Gippsland in South Gippsland and stuff. So when Paul Keating expanded Triple J, that was the biggest thing ever for us to get Triple oh, J in, yeah. in the bush because yeah. that was the whole point. Because we didn't, you couldn't get anything. All we could get was the local radio stations. And then all of a sudden, it was they were playing, you know, Smashing Pumpkins on the radio and stuff. It was, yeah. uh, <laughs> it was like finally something that I can get into. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. now that, you know, we were that total demographic, and then um, you know now it's all Double J because it's the old person's yes. Double J. Yes, yes. Well, like I'm kind of on the cusp with that. A lot of the Double J stuff, I'm, 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 I'm a little bit more into. It, I must admit, I just turned thirty last week as well. So it's like, so I'm more like I, I realized that the first track they played on Double J when they launched it was, uh, well, like the digital version, obviously, was um a Nick Cave song, and I was like, oh, that's very good, very oh, good. They just, they just did the, uh, the old nineties week or something on triple j and it was going oh yep i know that 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 yeah. <laughs> so i was right in that zone you know that sort of you know 94 to 99 zone is right you know yeah right where my ta- where all my music collection is like i've still got cds my parents gave me all my cds back now that i own my own home they said oh you're, oh, you're at home here are all your cds back and it's just that 96 to 2003 yeah well mine I, I actually did the same thing I've, I pulled out all mine because I just moved back to my parents ready to move to Melbourne so I pulled out all my CDs I've got about 300 of them they're packed up like just over there just behind me and I've got about 300 of them they're, they're from about 2007 till about 2011 see we would then, put them together and then, we'd cover yeah exactly <laughs> we, would cover, and then, we would cover the last 20 years nearly I know right together. Yeah, and then I've got like a bunch of old '90s stuff that I that I love. Like Blur's my favorite band. I got a lot of I got everything Nick Cave's done. I got everything Faith No More's done. So it's 
very it's a very diverse collection of us i mean i was just picking up i that's when i had disposable income when i was young enough to have disposable income you know so it's a shame yeah. whatever you could yeah well, we exactly. would just go like me and my mate sean who i lived with for years and years we would you know on our weekends we would go to this record store called Goldmine. i think it might even still be there in uh it was sort of in carlton and it was basically the guy who ran it i think he had some connection either to music journos or he had a mate who was a music journo. So he'd all, he'd have all these CDs and they'd always be quite cheap, like new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 20, 20 bucks or so, maybe less. They'd always have like, you know, not for sale promotion stickers. Yeah. All over them where <laughs> yes. He had to connect for the, you know, so he'd get all the promo stuff. So we'd go down there and go, Oh, you know, this is, you know, get the new perfect circle record or something. And it's, yeah. uh, get it for 17 bucks. And uh, I think they might still be there, but I don't know. It's been a long time since I've bought a physical CD. Yeah, yeah, me too. Actually, me too. A lot. Although getting onto Star Wars, I was uh, I was actually at the market, which I go to most weekends with a little family out, and we go to the, sort of like a Camberwell market. It's like a you know trash and treasure flea markety kind of thing, but it's sort of Camberwell because it's a, a a well-to-do suburb. It's usually got pretty nice stuff there. Yeah. But I got uh, the original trilogy on VHS for a dollar each. Oh wow! Yeah. Very so good. The, um, so the ones that came out just before the special editions. So it's oh. not the special editions. It's the the original recipe. It's not the sort of like original home video ones, but it's the the ones before that. So that's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, for a dollar each. I mean, just to put them on the shelf. I don't. Um, I don't have a uh, working VHS player in the house. So that's me. Also, I was going to actually bring that up because um, the first collection I had was the special edition collection. Is it the With gold the, one? Yeah, the gold one. The yeah. gold one. That was the one I had. So, and it was really quite funny because I, I, I had, I have no idea where they went, where those original ones went. And then um, I, I had a housemate who was just like, "Oh, you're a big Star Wars fan. I think I've got some of the VHSs at home." And she brought them over, it's so like from her parents' house, and it was the original one. So I've, wherever my ori- original set went, I have no idea, but I have a set now, which I'm really happy about. But same thing no working vhs player yeah <laughs> well you know it's 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 still cool to have it's it, you know i'd really love to get the the home video ones that like when you're a kid you're a little bit younger but you know you go to the video store and it would just be the one that was on the shelf with the artwork the original artwork stuff like yeah. i'd like to get those but they're probably for something just to stick them on a shelf it's kind of like you know yeah uh, you know, i probably don't really need to be splurging Splurging on those, but um, I'm glad we got back to Star Wars. There, you know, yeah, we were, we, we got, we got we were there. reminiscing about our youth, but we, we, we worked our way back around. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, how are you feeling about Star Wars at the moment, Paul? Um, I, I when I heard you ask this from uh, of other people, uh, Star Wars itself, I'm pretty happy with. I like I I'm I'm I like Last Jedi a lot. Like I've, I I has to say I love it. Um, I really liked Solo as well. I'm really looking forward to Resistance. Uh, I like how they finished off Rebels. Um, I'm excited for the future, but I guess it's just that whole thing of fandom as well. Is it's a bit, little bit makes me feel a bit strange about it, though. You know yeah, what I mean? It's, it's a, it's a, it's a recurring theme that it's sort of the, the stuff around it that gets people down rather than the stuff itself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I suppose I, I, you know, I have people on here who are friends or relatives and stuff. I don't sort of go out of my way to try and get people who have differing opinions, I suppose. Yeah. So, you know, most of the people I, you know, talk to are pretty positive and, and it always seems to be that, ah, oh, that, that online, that fandom bit is the bit that kind of gets me down. And yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And it's not as easy as just sort of going, you know, because people will be like, oh, we'll just get off get off social media and then, and, you know, what are you worried about? But it, it's not as easy as that, is it really? It's, it's, it's not that it, simple, yeah. It leaks into everything else as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. I've, I guess I've been lucky, though, with um, when it does come to stepping back and things like that. Um, like, I just, I guess I was using, pretty much using my Twitter account for Star Wars and, and I guess for comedians as well, just like, I mean, I, I I follow all those guys on Facebook as well. So generally, I only follow comedians who make jokes as well. Yeah. Like, so it's you know, so, so I don't get bogged down in. And but then a lot of comedians get very into politics as well. So there's that, and then there's the whole Star Wars thing. So I ended up just <laughs> stopping with Twitter. I just stepped back from Twitter, and even just doing that helped so much. Like, and I probably did that maybe three months ago. Probably just after Solo came out, actually. I probably did that. 
and it's been so much better just getting off Twitter <laughs> and just getting out of just the, that annoying chamber, you know? So Yeah, <clears throat> I'm certainly still there, but I'm, I'm, I'm not particularly, I mean, I'm probably a bit more of a lurker. I certainly engage with the people I know and like and stuff, but I don't kind of get into making grand statements or chiming in on things too much whether i believe them or not and stuff yeah. like that. people people I, I know seem to seem to be able to uh you know uh, be more eloquent in that or you know are willing to sort of see it to the end a little bit more than i you know so i'm quite happy just to sort of step back and chime in with a few zingers every now and then. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now I'm, and then. I'm i'm like that but a lot of times that's, that's a problem is like is going through twitter and just being like getting annoyed by it and letting it get you down a bit. And so I was just like, you know, what? I'm, I'm not even going to work anymore. Like just get off for a while and just see what happens. So, right, and, 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 and all I've, the roses. Yeah, exactly. I, and I, I feel like, I feel like my, my um, love for Star Wars is, you know, it's, it's mending a little more as well. Cause I felt a little bit like, like, Oh no, I'm, I, I'm part of that fandom. You know, it's like, You oh. don't want to have to carry that as well as the, yeah, but that's the thing. Like you don't want the, you want to love the thing you love. You don't want you don't want the the bad things to be intrinsically linked with it. Really, you want to be yeah. able to just follow the things that you love. And the, and the thing is that you know when you you get home and you put the movie on or something, you you know if, especially if it's a Star Wars one, you don't spend much time on your phone anyway. You're usually too busy. Very much so. Yeah. I watched all the um. I watched. I got the solo uh, Blu-ray yesterday and. Uh, so this last night just went through all the all the special features, you know, just sat there and just watched all the special features sort of in a row, and I'd I'd all the deleted scenes and everything, and, I, and a couple of them had been online for a while, and I sort of just avoided them and stuff. So it was quite nice just sitting there and watching all the yeah, and just kind of getting like, through just all the content. Yeah, that's right. I got I <laughs> up to the end and went, oh, all right. Well, I've watched all of that now, so there it is. Well, that's... I guess I'll have to get around to watching the film again. Yeah, yeah, and I, but I feel like that's kind of all you need with it as well. Like you said, it's. Just go home, sit down, and watch it. I, I think that's especially what, um, in the last few years since everything started again, watching the new films and especially uh, Rebels as well. Watching that has been uh, like it's almost, it's almost so. It has kind of almost has this purity to it, like where like there's there's nothing negative about it. Whereas where, like whereas some, watching some of the movies, you you kind of almost be like ah. Oh, yeah, I, I kind of see where people are coming from and it kind of gets me down a little more. But whereas I feel like Rebels is a little more untouched, like in, in, <laughs> in, in my world anyway, in my world. So it's, it's, sort, of like, um, it's sort of like, um, it's sort of like a cleansing thing just to go back to it. It's like, um, have you seen Almost Famous, the film Almost Famous? Yes, I have. Yes, you know, yes, there's yes. Film, there's the, the scene, there's the scene, the famous scene is that, is that, you know, they're all having the big fight and the argument and everybody's on the bus yep. and they're all hating each other. And then... Uh, Elton John comes on the bus. T Tiny Dancer comes, dancer, and they all yeah, start yeah. sitting there, and they're kind of grooving and all looking at each other, and they all start singing along. So they, it's sort of like they they remember the thing that they love, and yeah. they, you know, it, it reminds them that you know that they're all together. They all love this one thing, and in this kind of moment that they they all kind of forget about all the bullshit and everything like that, and everyone's just having a good time and smiling and things. And all. <laughs> You know, that, I think that's what you, that's pretty good actually. I might turn that into a that's a meme waiting to happen right there. You definitely, know, you know, the, yes, yes. <laughs> that's cut away the. But, that's definitely you know, a wholesome you, Star Wars meme for sure. Yeah, that you, yeah. <laughs> you, you you sit back and you when you pop the film on, you turn the lights off, or you do whatever. It doesn't have to be that. Even you just get on. Remember the things that you really love about it. You kind of forget about the rest of the you know, and then you kind of go, well, if someone's going to be a dick about it, well whatever i've still got i've still got this and yeah. and luckily enough in the case of the circles that i mix in that there are enough people who you know just love love the same things and want to talk about the, the same things as well so you can always which, kind of yeah them as well. which is the good thing the good and and i think that's been one of the most important things about it as well is, is making sure that you don't talk to people who are going to be completely negative about star wars because it's just it just gets me down way too much you know, you especially for something quick. like Star, you know, for something like Star Wars, you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't get you down, you know. No, exactly. Like, it, there's, there's enough crap going on in the world. <laughs> like, why can't <laughs> Star Wars just be pure? So, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, with um, Resistance, are you an animation guy? Like, have you got, have you, were you an animation guy growing up or anything like that, or are you just sort I, of like, oh, yeah, I like, I, I was, I was the perfect age for like Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. So, right. And even before that, like the Disney Channel was big for me. We had Optus Vision for our cables. So um, Ooh, wow, I was very right. happy about that. So yeah, a lot of Disney stuff I was into, like DuckTales and things like that. 
So, and just growing up, like, I mean, I really liked Clone Wars and I really liked some of the storylines in it. I think this is probably a very common thing as well, um, that a lot of it is really good, but there is way too much filler. Um, but I felt like with Rebels, that was perfect for me. Like, I, it, and it kind of reminded me of, um, like, of, of any of the, um, of I, I, the original trilogy. It's like the ragtag group kind of thing. Um, and then in the aftermath trilogy of of novels as well, that it just has this like ragtag feel about it as well that mm-hmm. Rebels gives off. Um, so and I just there's something about that that I just adore. So I with and with Resistance, it's just um, there's something about that animation style that I'm really interested in. That I think yeah. it's going to be it's a obviously a brand new look for Star Wars. It's a very um... I mean, it's it's definitely got its anime roots and things, and it, it looks like I don't know if you're a gamer, but it's got a very Breath of the Wild, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild yes, look to it as it well. It certainly but does. It sort of it goes back to my. I mean, I always get reminded of the stuff I watched as a kid, which is you know a little bit earlier than you, which was your, your Astro Boys, your Voltrons, your Battle of the Planets, which was all you know they were all Japanese anime shows that they basically would dub into English or cut up and turn into different, you know, programs and stuff yeah. and things like yeah. that. There's some quite fascinating um, YouTube documentaries about stuff like Voltron and, and Battle of the Planets where it was a completely different show and they would just, you know, chop and change the bits and, and put these, you know, the dubbing over the top, the top yeah. and stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's a cool look. You know, it's nice to sort of get away from that, you know, the Rebels and Clone Wars, which is sort of slightly more based in... I don't know, realism, but it, you know, that CG kind of almost like computer cutscene looking kind of, yeah, kind of style. And yeah, I'm not so, sure. And, uh, Sorry, I'm not, I'm not sure if you've seen on Netflix, but there's a, um, there's two anime Godzilla movies on Netflix that are part of a trilogy. Uh, the oh, third wow. one's coming out in January and it's, and it's the same studio as well. So if, if it ends up looking anywhere near as good as that Godzilla one does, then I, I think we'll have something really special on our hands. Like, yeah, cool. Yeah, so, I mean, I've, I've only read that somewhere once, so don't quote me on that. But for some reason, I have that fact in my head. So please, listeners, don't quote. I, I don't want you to get any <laughs> I don't want you to get any emails or anything like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there's a, there's a Godzilla ones. Are they all, like, Godzilla's not like a, I know, obviously he's a character, but he's not like, he doesn't like talk or anything, does he? No, it's more like, no. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's, it's, it's about um, the planet dealing with Godzilla. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah uh, it's, 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 it's quite heavy sci-fi as well quite heavy sci-fi okay. so it's really good it's really good highly recommend yeah, right. it. okay i'll have to, I'll check that i i um i saw the the godzilla i know they're doing another godzilla movie quite soon aren't they because i think eventually they wanted to fight king kong that's the plan i think yes yeah, so that the next one is godzilla king of monsters that looks really good so with Godzilla sort of going and here's Rome, everyone uh, yes everyone so i'm 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 really looking forward to that that looks really good yeah nice nice yeah. so you are a comedy man. You were talking about comedy in Star Wars and stuff. Now, we know who the number one Star Wars comedian is. We don't really obviously. have to. Yeah, we don't, we don't really, you know. Doesn't need to be know, said. It's, it's yes, pretty obvious yes. somebody who's a friend of the show, guest who's been in the goes, obviously, Steel Saunders, who's got his little baby boy now. Yes, congratulations, congratulations Steel. Steel. Who, who's number two? Ah, uh, that's a good question. When I was no calling... one out there's flying the flag. As no, much, I they? don't think there is. Um, uh, yeah, it's hard. I, I really like Ben Russell. Ben Russell's quite good. He oh, does. Yeah. Um, he, he's been on Steel's game, podcast game, before. Russell. What's that? Yes, Game Gaming. Game, game. Yep, game, yes, yep, that's yep. right. Um, he's he's incredible. He does. He, he's done it on Steel's live podcast. Um, Michael Caine as Jabba. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> which is one of the funniest things I've seen. But I wouldn't say that he's flying any kind of flag, though. Because the thing is, like with Steel, well, we don't want to talk, do because it's the talk of Steel Wars, but you know, obviously, especially earlier on, you know, a lot of guests were comedians, you yeah, know, and they and they'd all have a Star Wars story one way or another. But it's you know, like you talk about stuff like, uh, especially in Melbourne, like AFL or Aussie Rules and stuff. It's like throw a rock and you'll find a bunch of comedi- comedians, you know, like your Danny McGinley's, Adam Rosenbach's, Michael Chamberlain's, all those guys, you know, flying the AFL that they're, they're the AFL guys, yeah, but. Yeah, the Star Wars seems to be the, just the one the, the one dude. I mean, it works out well for yeah. him, but he's sort of the go-to guy. Yeah. But, um, 
it's it's I just quite thought, strange. Yeah, given your, that, given that, your knowledge, yeah, the, the, there are definitely a few other like uh, I guess you'd say kind of uh, you know th- there's there's your footy comedians, the ones who are into foot, and there's your kind of like gaming comedians, and you kind of as you mentioned, gamey gamey game. So th- there are a, pe- a few people in in that kind of world who are into People's Star casual, Wars. Like Tommy Daslo. And yeah. The, the so guy, so yeah. Uh, I, I know Ben Vanilla and Adam Knox are into Star Wars. Um, you know the his his co-hosts. Um, I know Tommy's not a huge fan. Um, and yeah, I obviously Ben Russell as I said before. But other than that, like you know, Dave Callan is into Star Wars, obviously. Um, but yeah, definitely nobody. Fl- I couldn't even think nobody of nobody flying um, any kind of flag. But even international, like even you know, I was like, oh, Pat Oswalt, he's done some Star Wars stuff. But yeah, but I he's, couldn't I, really he's, think of. He's even, still not the Star Wars guy, though, is he's, he? You know? No, he's he's even a little more like of that kind of just well-rounded nerd. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, he's, <laughs> he's well-rounded. <laughs> oh, <laughs> pardon, uh, pardon. Hello, Pat. Oh, hi, Pat. And if you're listening, I, I, of course you are. I love I Pat Oswalt. So, he's, you know. he's incredible. He's incredible. He'll go. That's a fair. Yeah. He'll go. That's a fair one. You can have that one. Yeah. <laughs> Reach for the low-hanging fruit. Why not? Why not? When it's there, <laughs> when it's there, and you're hungry, take a bite. Because I don't consider like a. Seth Green, a comedian, really. I mean, he's sort of a Star Wars fly the flag. Yeah, trainer, and, you know? like and he did robot yes, chicken. And, and, and as I was going to say, growing up, I would have said like, oh, Seth MacFarlane. Like, you know, I was a yeah. big fan. Obviously, growing up when it started, like twenty years ago, I was ten when it started. So you know, I was I was a big fan of Family Guy growing up. Like that first that Blue Harvest was great. Like. Mm. I I think that was like one of the hardest I laughed that year when he goes, "All right, kid, don't get penisy," and I, I was I was sitting <laughs> with some friends who who knew Star Wars but not that well, and I could I lost it. I could go, "Why was, is he rolling around on the floor?" <laughs> yeah, it, okay, it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Um, so back then I would have said, and then but then obviously there was so many like diminishing returns after that, and yep. since then, yeah, like Seth Green with Robot Chicken, maybe, but. I can't even, we, yeah. Weird, like Weird Al, maybe? Like, you know, but Weird Al's yeah. been doing Star Wars gear for 35 years and well, stuff. I mean, so, it, especially with Star Wars, you know, so big again, like, let's, I hope he brings out another one. That's what yeah, I'm Yeah, that's thinking. right. Well, it's yeah, been, I saw it. been I, I saw, one. That's true, actually. Yeah, What's nearly 20 Weird years. Al? Well, well, there you go. Everybody who's listening, jump on Twitter, hit up Weird Al and be like, where's our new Star Wars song? Where's our new trilogy yeah. Star Wars? Song? I know he doesn't take he doesn't take submissions, Weird Al, just yes. because he doesn't want that to is go. Very true. He doesn't want you know he doesn't want to bring out you know another one rides the bus and someone going hey man I sent you my demo of another of one rides the bus yes. and yes. he's like it's easy for me just to not you know I've I've seen Weird Al in concert before it's uh, it's a good time seeing Weird Al. I've I've always wanted to, but it's it just never worked out for me. It's never worked he's out. Done, he's done Australia a couple of times. My um, yeah, I, I, and Laura, I, his wife went last time. Yes, so it's been a while since I've been. I went in oh four or oh two or oh three or oh four or something. Yeah, I I think I was aware of the first tour he did was when he released Poodle Hat. I just <laughs> I, I just I just remember the image of the album like next to the tour dates in Drum Media one day. Yeah, yeah, like he's in, got a in, train in straight with a, with a dog on his head, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the and it says Poodle Hat in balloons as well. Yeah, so come on, Weird Al, where's our new Star Wars song? <laughs> yeah, that's, he's missed a trick because he obviously you know he did the episode one one and I you know when that when that came out, it uh, sort of spoiled the movie. But uh, you know well, that's true. I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think but I think he'd that. just gotten. I think he'd said that he just basically just read online, like he just went to like whatever it was around the force dot net or whatever had all the spoilers at the time, and was just like, all right, well, I let me just uh, work my way through this, and I'll I'll find some gold, and uh, yeah, did he well. did it. When I saw him live, he did it. He <clears> had the he had, he put on the like he had like a like the, oh, the, the Obi Wan Kenobi yes. outfit on, yes. and he does all the costume changes. He does the fat suit. Yeah. The, I need to do it. I need to see him. I need to see him. <laughs> next time. Well, next time you're in Melbourne, well, you are moving to Melbourne. Next time he comes out, we'll, we'll go see Weird Al. That would be great. That would be great. We'll make, we'll make a date of it. Please. We'll, uh, get, get our Hawaiian shirts out. And, uh... <laughs> I'd be more than happy to do that. I'd be more than happy to <laughs> I, I have a couple myself as well. I, I know where yeah, they well, are. Like, speaking of that record store I, I, that we were talking about before, he had. <clears throat> he, I went in there one day and he had 
like six or seven Weird Al records, like albums for like ten dollars each. I'm like, all right, I'm having those. So I just bought, you know, six or seven Weird Al CDs all in one hit, basically. I mean, now they're just all on Spotify, so you can yeah. go back. But I do have them. Um, out there somewhere i'm not gonna dig them out now <laughs> they're always re- always rewarded yeah so it's just funny thinking about the star wars comedy stuff because it's um yeah it hasn't really there's been bits of stuff that's sort of bled into popular culture a little bit with your saturday night live things you know like adam yeah. driver being on snl and stuff but yeah and bobby moynihan is, is a huge star wars fan from and snl he's in resistance yeah. isn't he what's that he's in resistance isn't he is he in yes resistance? he is in resistance he is which is very exciting. I just think, keep thinking of that. I don't know, do you watch Rick and Morty? Yes, they, yes. Where they have the episode where he's watching the Intergalactic Saturday Night Live. And yeah, uh, yeah. And he, oh, he's... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> piece of toast. <laughs> uh, Bobby Moynihan. <laughs> like, oh, Bobby Moynihan and Piece of Toast can't stand each other. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the funniest thing too, because Bobby Moynihan seems like the sweetest guy in the world. So like for him to be angry <laughs> at a piece of toast is just... Like it just adds another another level to the absurdity. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, it's cool that he gets to be. I mean, that's the um, the dream, isn't it? Really, to be a to be a fan and um and get and get logged in like that. But um, I, so yeah. But I don't feel there's much, you know, because there was that talk. They had talked a little while ago that they were going to do. Actually, I have to look this up. Maybe I'll even look it up while you're. That they'll, you know, those stupid like um, scary. Oh, actually. I shouldn't lump them in because the original scary movie is actually pretty funny, but then they were doing like date movie and disaster yes, movie yes. and superhero movie. And then they did like, it sucks being a vampire or whatever. Like, I don't know what it was, you know, those terrible, terrible movies where, yeah. where they go, Oh, look, what are we doing here? It's Iron Man. And he goes, I'm Iron Man. And then like a cow falls on him for no reason. Yes. Or, you know, but they were doing a star Wars one. There was like a whole thing where they were saying, Oh, we're going to make a star Wars parody movie of one of these you know, really like it. episode 500 we're making i've got to oh I'm my look it goodness I'm look it up. this is a few years ago they said they were going to make it but it, nothing's kind of come of it so it just seems a bit weird i'm so glad that i had not heard of that oh my god I know. well I've got to... what a revelation Josh, what a revelation! Yeah, here we go. Star Wars movies. This is ridiculous. Epic, epic, epic. Yeah, so last last February, the the epic movie team were making a Star Wars spoof, but the nothing's nothing's come of it. So I don't know whether they're still doing it or not. Oh my um, goodness, just... that's terrifying. Honestly, Josh, that is terrifying. Oh look, it'll be terrible. But, do you, uh, do, yeah, you do you think Lucasfilm would ever let them be able to do that? Like they'd be able to well, find a way. It's usually, um, you know, it's it's usually sort of legally, you know, cleared stuff that looks kind of like the, you know, you're right. It'll After be all, like a, you we're know, just talking about Weird Al and like that's all parody law and things like that. So of course, yeah, yeah. and it's always the weakest weakest yeah. puns. It's like. Uh, I don't know. I can't even think. It'll be some British girl, and she's like, "Hi, I'm Hey Hey Ray. You know, <laughs> I'm here to save the day. I'm here to save the day, Ray." Yeah. And you're gonna be like, "I'm Kylo Ben, and I'm mad, and, yeah. and it's just, it's just the worst." It's yeah, the worst. We, the... we we've we've seen enough uh, YouTube videos doing that kind of stuff that we 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 don't need a multi million dollar movie about it. Well, is this this is the point? We're talking about parody and you know Star Wars comedy and stuff like that, and is that. Is it the YouTube, your funny and dies, your YouTube that have kind of killed off that big, big part of it? People are just like, oh, look, it's just it's people on YouTube just did that gag or just do that now. There's no point. Yeah, I, th- I think I th- it's I, it's the it's the content machine, you know, like they yeah. and they they churn it out so quickly that everybody's going to get to those jokes before you do, and usually they're not that great, but if you're and but generally more than one swipe at it you're not going to get anything funnier so just don't make the joke in the first place like unless you can actually get adam driver to be in your sketch yeah like i mean bother i gotta admit like a lot of the snl stuff that i've seen that hasn't had some stuff any star wars people in it have been still quite good like but i think it's also because that's well and when i say quite good some of them some of the jokes are definitely hit or miss but that's also the other thing it's been done that week so it's yep. that same thing it's just that churning it out there so was one that they did um 
There was one that they did that was the other Star Wars one that was a, one of those. It didn't go to air, but they they'd obviously spent a lot of money on it. Yes, I can't yes. remember exactly what it was, but it was like obviously a Star Wars thing, and you know the production value was actually quite good. Yeah, but um, I can't remember the joke, but I remember it being not particularly great. I'm going, oh well, I can see why this didn't go to air because it's not very funny. Yeah, but it looked like tell. they'd spent a lot of money on it because yeah. they had like you know proper costumes and sets and stuff yeah like they of, I, I, guess is the... I think what happened was i think that went to that one went to dress rehearsal and there was filmed that anyway and they're like oh we spent all the money let's just put it out online like <laughs> yeah. just and and it being star wars it'll get some hits and you know yeah, someone will look at it yeah so obviously it gets picked up you know in australia by your pedestrians and your and then in america by your complexes and and within a day it's got a million hits on YouTube, so it's, it's it's probably worth them doing it. Probably worth them releasing it. <laughs> Getting I can a little bit back, it. yeah. <laughs> Whether it's that funny or not, you know. Well, I just saw Adam Driver on uh, SNL because he just came back and did another one the other night, and uh, it was perfectly fine. They didn't do any Star Wars. There was like one little Star Wars gag in the whole thing, and that was and that was it really. They didn't do a Star Wars sketch or anything. Was it in his monologue or something as well? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I thought so, he yeah, was, yeah. You know, Which is he understandable, was that's right. He was getting angry. He was getting angry and doing like a Kylo Ren face and they were playing the Kylo Ren music and then they would, you know, cut out and then he was, you know, internalizing and all the kind of things. Yeah. <laughs> Which is I, quite funny. Like, I, I have to check that episode out, actually. I have to check that episode out. Yeah. He's, he's, a, pretty, um, he's a pretty interesting dude, Adam Driver. I think he'd be a bit hard to read. Yeah, well, oh also at the same time, I I never saw any uh any kind of reviews of of uh, Adam Driver's performance because it was all over- overshadowed by Kanye West and all of his business. So, yeah, when, that's right. I was I was going to say when you say he's a pretty interesting dude, I'm like, yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah, but at least and but definitely not Kanye interesting. So that's probably a good yeah, thing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I think Kanye would probably be scared of Adam Driver. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. I reckon Adam Driver took absolutely no shit from him. Absolutely yeah, well, none. He was a Marine. You forget Adam Driver was a Marine. You yeah, know, like, yeah. Kick some serious butt. Oh, he it's, certainly it's, could. Um, he's a funny one, Adam Driver, because he's just sort of the. He's a lot of no one really. <laughs> No one really criticizes or questions. I mean, he's, he's good. You know what I mean? Like, there's so the, the movies are so picked apart, like especially this new trilogy. You know. Yeah. But Adam Adam Driver just sort of like, yep, he's great. What he does yeah. is great. He, he he's, kind he's of always... he, he's almost like in a, in in a lot of people's reviews and of him of the of the films and things like that. He just seems to kind of just fly under the radar. It's just like, yeah, no, we're not going to bother talking about him because you know he's great. Don't worry about it. I did, like I did actually, Carlo Ren's a pretty intense and you know he, and very he nuanced character as well yeah he pushed a little bit further he could be you know really chewing the scenery and you know but he manages to sort of walk that line between that intense character you know who is essentially a bit of a man baby at times yeah, and, yeah. and stuff but he kind of just comes from like oh yeah no nah, adam driver he's just uh he's just doing his thing you know? yeah yeah, and, no, and, um, it's a lot of respect for that. And I guess that's the Marine in him as well. Just goes in and gets the job done. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't ask, you don't ask too many questions. You're yeah. like, well, the job's done. You were just, yeah. uh, well done, Adam. And, uh, yeah. And, and, and or, or, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just that people are too scared of him. He's just like, they're like, uh, Adam, he's just like, yes. Just with that intense stare on him. And they're just like, you know what? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a wrap. That's a wrap on Adam. Well done, Adam. <laughs> Okay. Or like, could I do it? Could I do it any way better? And they're like, no, 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 it was fine. He's like, no, seriously. And they're like, no, 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 don't worry about it. And he's like, come on, what? <laughs> are, are people scared of me? Like, he's probably just a puppy dog as well, I reckon. Uh, I'd like to think he's a puppy dog. Yeah. I mean, people, ladies love my my partner cat loves Adam Driver. And I remember when I um when Girls first came out, um my flatmates in London, Holly and Louise would watch girls when it first came out and they, and they would just gush about Adam Driver. And I would just go, and he was, you know, he's a, he's definitely a handsome dude, but he's an interesting looking dude. He's not yeah. a conventionally, like they kind of handsome him up as Ben Stoller with the hair and stuff, but he's yeah. certainly not a traditionally leading man, handsome kind of guy. But, no. he's definitely, but they were just like, oh no, he's whew, Adam Driver. Like he <sighs> is. You know he's intense and he's uh, you know brooding and he's uh, interesting. Definitely and... an aura, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah and and, exactly. and for that to translate like on screen is pretty incredible. 
Yeah, it sounds yeah. like we're just gushing about Adam Driver. Yeah, maybe, well. maybe we are. Maybe we are. But, oh, the well, Adam Driver right. fan po- fan podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Adam Driver Appreciation Society. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess speaking of appreciation as well, I was going to tell you, I saw uh, Christopher Robin the other day. You and McGregor. McGregor Chris- Is this a bit of a tearjerker? Oh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I absolutely adored it. Yeah. And How just just they, um... and it just made me be like, oh, that's why I live, love you and McGregor. He's he's one of the best actors just in general, and I'm 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 not sure what you're thinking about Obi Wan, like any kind of new Obi Wan thing, but I just really want to see him back as Obi Wan. Oh, for sure, for sure. But I don't want to. I would. I'd rather do six part Netflix series. Ah, uh, yes, I actually. I want I slow, burn. I, want slow burn. I would very much enjoy that as well. I'd because very much. Then there's enjoy less. That. Because I'd like him to stay on Tatooine, but I feel like if you do it as a film, you have to pay it off at the end. So you have to have a, a you have to have a what's the word I'm looking for? Like a set piece, you know, like a yes, you know, like your Kessel Run or your you know something or along those mall, lines. Like, a mall at the end of it, kind of thing. Yeah, or just like yeah. a big action sequence kind of thing. But I kind of want Obi Wan to slow burn like he can fix problems and do stuff but i feel yeah. like he can if he does it in a six-part series it's a lot more you have a whole episode establishing how his life's pretty crap and he's yeah. just trudging along and you know i just feel like that you could you would get more out of that more slow burn and you mcgregor you know he did fargo the last season of fargo so he's not a yeah. just to doing tv and i think he'd actually i feel like he i don't know i can't speak for him obviously but i think he'd be open to that to be like oh i can really you know get my teeth into it and you know, because I, I think if he just goes, movie is a bit of a one shot, probably. I think if the, yeah. you could do, you could you could certainly stretch it out if you needed to. And if yeah. you're doing this streaming service, like why not? Yeah, I, I'd rather I'd rather see, like, I don't. Yeah, if if it, if it was a movie kind of thing, I'd rather see that in a sorry a one shot style thing. I'd rather it be a kind of like in a comic book or in a book even because I've, I've I've read most of the new canon book novels as well so i even even in a book i'd be i'd be really happy like you know either because uh, you know how they've done like catalyst for rogue one mm-hmm. and they so they've done a couple of and uh what was the the han solo one that i haven't gotten that one yet like last shot or something like that oh yeah that's yeah, that's yeah. like a prequel to that as well or or yeah something like that i i I haven't gotten around to that one yet. I really want to. I've heard really good things about that one, but I'd really like something like that, like a, a lead-in book. You know, if it was going to be just a one-shot movie, but definitely, I'm on your side with the TV show. Slow burn sounds perfect to me. I've because I've, yeah. I've been scared, a little scared about an Obi Wan movie, so I wanted to see what you thought. And it'd be it'd be cheap. <laughs> yeah, it could just be on the desert. It could just be yeah. you know you wouldn't need heaps of sets and stuff. You, I mean, you know, you still there's still Star Wars. There'll have to be some stuff, but. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't know how. Like, I don't want to see him. I don't know. I don't even know what they do. Like, you know, blowing up a spaceship or, or doing something like in Tatooine. Like, what do you do? I, I yeah. I'm, that's why I'm not a writer. No one asking me. But uh, yeah, yeah. Look, for sure. <laughs> I think he'd be up for it. He's, he's age appropriate. He can. Yeah. You know, he. I think Hugh McGregor must be in his mid forties, late forties by now. And yeah, he still, definitely. He can pass yeah. for younger or, or older. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I'm mean, because like I mean, I was going to say as well. Like last thing I saw him in, which wasn't that long ago either, was uh, Train Spotting Two, as well. That was only mm. like you know year and a half ago or something. That's a pretty good film too. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I I, I kind of related to it more than the first one because I've you know I've, can't say went on heroin. I've, yeah, can't can't say I've ever you know been been a heroin addict. So uh, and or nor living in Scotland, but. I guess that's what happens in the second one still, but yeah, I I, I could just I could totally I, I could relate to it a lot more that second one than the first, like yeah, I mean it's got a lot to live up to, but I think it does it, it does a good job. I think it did a very good job. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy to think that that was what was that ninety four? So that was yeah, like twenty five years ago. Yeah, like it's crazy. crazy isn't it? to, yeah, I remember, yeah I remember when that came out and it was like oh. Yeah, this movie's really full on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it still is really full on. Great soundtrack. He's so, just great soundtrack. So, Chris, so Christopher Robin, I've I've only seen the trailers for that. He, how do the the poo and the piglets and stuff look? Because they kind of look like stuffed animals that kind of come to life. Yeah, don't yeah, they? and they and the cool thing is they kind of look a little raggedy, which is cool because right. it is. Yeah, so kind of left in the left in the closet for too long. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, that's a little bit like what it is. Yeah, yeah, it's so it's kind of like Hook. 
It's like hook, isn't it? A little bit, yeah, yes. But it's uh, so it's so obviously the like uh, the the books were originally released in like the twenties or so. So this is about thirty years later. So it's set in the fifties after the war. Mm-hmm. So it's still a bit of a period piece as well. So it's like, and you know, so I it's I think it'd be perfect for for parents as well. Like I'm not even a parent, and I adored it. I adore it, you know. So I mean, I'll definitely watch it. I'm certainly familiar with the with the characters to a point. My daughter's probably a little bit little for Winnie the Pooh. She probably she recognizes some of the characters from the Disney stuff, yep. but she we haven't done the books or anything like that. Yeah, so is he is Winnie the Pooh? Is, was that a Disney film? Yes, it was. Yes. Okay, so yeah. they still own Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, I was just sort of wondering if he's sort of public domain. There's some weird legal stuff about what public domain because it's like Peter Pan is public domain that's why they keep tuning out peter pan because anybody can make a peter pan yeah yes you know, same um, as wizard of oz and stuff like that yeah. it's all just public domain now so yeah and robin hood as well and things yeah. like that yeah just keep churning them yeah 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 but i think disney's got some weird thing i think with snow white they don't own snow white but they own seven dwarfs i think they invented seven dwarfs so there's this ah. weird legal thing yeah, my aunt is a barrister and she was involved in some copyright stuff a few years ago that she said that basically Disney have been um, behind a lot of pushing of changing copyright law because then because of the the because basically the stuff becomes public domain and they've been I think they've managed to push a lot of it back because a lot of that stuff yeah it's from the 30s and things now should be public but domain by now yeah but because so, you know, like, of, yeah like when you wish upon a star and things like that you know yeah but they're just like no 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 we want to. There's, there's there's so many interesting laws around that. Like it's been it's been a long time since I studied this because I did the music business for when I was about you know twenty, um, and um, the copyright law stuff is pretty fascinating. Like and and the way that they get around it and like a, a big landmark thing was um, did you hear about the Grey album that um, oh, the, uh, Danger yeah, Mouse yeah, the made Jay Z White album Jay Z yep. White album yeah mashup yep. yeah so that was like a landmark thing for that kind of stuff. You know, because he didn't right. make any money off it, he just put it online for free. So yeah, like that kind of stuff's really interesting. So yeah, I, I guess that's what's. I'm I'm quite interested to see what happens. One day Star with, Wars will be public domain. Yeah, exactly. Like, but I, that's what I mean. As we were saying, with just Star Wars and Lucasfilm's control over IP, like what kind of parodies and what kind of comedy are they going to let happen? You know, that's not already. You know, that's not bad comedy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's something that they might be able to have some kind of control over. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah, it's a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. So, I, I guess you, you know, there's some, it, it, there's kids comedy obviously out there. Like, you know, um, like Rebels can be a little bit slapsticky and things like that, but not a proper comedy. So, I'd, yeah. I'd be very interested to see how see what they do with that. Do you think they'll ever make a flat out Star Wars comedy? I don't think so. Not anytime soon. Yeah, I don't yeah, think so anytime it's, soon. It'd be a bit of a. I mean, obviously there was that um, that Star Wars detours stuff that kind of leaked online. Yeah. Years ago, that was, that that, that know, was was it that wasn't was, amazing. No, no, not a not a high level of comedy there. No. <laughs> but that was more. That was sort of more self parody, I suppose. I guess I was thinking more like a comedy film or series set in the universe, I suppose. But yeah. I know, like, yeah. Could yeah. You do that? I, I, I'm not sure if that would. Yeah. I don't think they would anytime soon. I, I reckon they're kind of, that they, I think low on ideas. Yeah. And I think they have to, it's almost like they have to establish themselves a little bit as well in with newer kind of uh, themes and, you know, and, and way of going about, I guess, making films and not just, you know, like, I, I guess there's that, you know, there was talk that, you know, with Rogue One and the reshoots and stuff, it, it was getting a little too dark, you know, or, or a little too gritty or something, and then they had to brighten it up a bit. And then it, it still felt like a Star Wars movie, you know. But There is that kind of Goldilocks zone that Star Wars sits in, isn't it, really? Yeah. Realistically, it kind of can't be too much this, can't be too much that. And they've kind of, you know, because all the talk about Solo was it was getting too jokey and you know they weren't taking it seriously enough and yeah you know they're veering off the script so they you know they bring back bring in 
good old reliable Ron Howard to, yeah. you know, to bring it into that Star Wars Goldilocks zone. You yeah, know, sort of the... that's that's a really good way of putting it, the Goldilocks zone. I don't, I don't think I've heard that term. Oh, there you go. There's the episode, there's the episode title right yeah, there. Yeah, there the you Goldilocks go, zone. the Goldilocks zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it'll be very interesting to see if they, can, if they can make a comedy and be able to have it in that kind of Goldilocks zone, I guess. Yeah, the Star Wars yeah. zone, yeah. And I don't think they're ever going to really stray. I mean, they're kind of going, oh, well, you know, Resistance is, you know, kid more skewed towards kids and things. Yeah. But I think that's slightly different. I think it's easier because you can skewer lighter in tone. But, you know, I don't think Solo was a tone thing where it was like it was getting too kiddy. I think it was just getting a bit stupid. Yeah, yeah. Th- that's, I-, I think that's what, I, what I'd what i kind of gathered and what I'd kind of decided in my mind. You know, you obviously never hear exactly what the reason is, but I, I have the same kind of feeling. It was just getting a little bit too silly. Yeah. yeah, that it yeah. would kind of take you out of the universe, and you're kind of like, oh, then I'm watching a, I'm watching an SNL thing that doesn't go to air. Yes, kind of exactly. Yeah, but, I, <laughs> but the, the, you know, the, the lightheartedness in Solo, I think, worked really well, in the end. Yeah, so but it's in that, it's, it's, it's in that zone. Perfect. Like it's the same yeah. sort of humor that you know, it's like Last Jedi is full of gags. Yeah, to- totally, totally. There, there were some people who complained about some of the jokes and stuff, but I didn't have a problem with them at all. You know, especially. I felt that it was on a sort of similar sort of Return of the Jedi level of, of gags. Yeah, I yeah, I'd I'd probably say about the same. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. But yeah, and I, I think that a lot of like so my friend, my the co-host on my podcast actually, when I showed him Last Jedi, we watched it together, and it was the jokes that kind of made him not like the film. He he's really? he, he's not a huge Star Wars fan. He he's seen yeah, he's right. seen all the movies. He has seen everything. But he's he was just like yeah the jokes kind of took me out a little bit, so he he also we only saw the prequels when they were in the cinemas as well. Mm-hmm. He's he's never rewatched them, so I, I think if he'd watched the prequels again, he'd just be like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, no, Last Jedi is fine. Last Jedi is fine. Well, that's what I mean. Like, it, it, <laughs> yeah, it, it's what your references are. Like, even Rogue One has jokes and stuff in it. Totally. As well. So yeah. you kind of go, oh, you know, is that, but. Um, you know, Marvel obviously as well has all the jokes and things. It's sort of, it would just be a bit weird if you just had a Star Wars film where it was just a, a downer all the time, you know, yeah. a, a downer through the whole thing. You kind of need those, those moments of levity and stuff. Yeah. But, um, and I'm sure episode nine will be full of gags as well. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, I, I can't wait for it. I can't wait for more gags. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like a good gag's a good gag. Like I, I don't, I don't mind what it's in just like, but obviously in, in Star Wars, it's, it'd be a bit scary to overdo it in a, you know, in in a in one of the saga films, especially. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of obviously episode nine when you're kind of wrapping it up and the stakes are you know, supposedly higher than they've ever been. You've got to be very careful where you where you place your, your jokes and stuff. But I thought Last Jedi didn't put jokes in the wrong places and things. I think the la- the la- the last joke in the whole film, joke joke, was probably you know when Luke turns up and you know they're shooting at him and stuff like that and you know Kyle's like oh more more and that he's like oh do you think you got him and then he he pushes him you know he kind of pushes him aside and the guy goes oh right away you know I'll let you down that you know they were the sort of the last two yeah and, and I, just, I don't think and just that the, the shoulder brush like and, and yeah even I wouldn't that wasn't even really see that as gag. a joke I, th- no. I thought that was more just he was kind of trolling him wasn't he yeah a just bit? trolling him a little bit yeah yeah just I knowing that I've got actually, this like. But it was funny the the shoulder brush and the um, you know, he gives the wink to three PO. Yeah, you know when he kind of, I thought they were the two more unluke things than any like people you know spent a whole time going, oh Luke would never do this, Luke would never do that. Those two Oops. moments actually felt less Luke. They f- like they were kind of more like a cockiness that I'd never really seen. In Luke, yeah, I thought, and I kind of like I, I was totally fine because it's like, well, Luke's you know it's thirty years down the line, but I kind of thought that they were not quite as Luke that he was sort of you know a bit yeah, sort of that's an interesting and... point. Yeah, yeah, you've made yeah. I kind of when you say it that way, I kind of look at it a little differently now. Yeah, see, so he... they're definitely cool. Yeah, yeah, but it's not. I didn't feel it was very Luke like yeah like i mean yeah and as you said don't, don't get me wrong I, I do like those moments but yeah i i yeah they're probably the least luke moments that yeah because everything else makes sense up with with his decision to disappear for a while yeah. and that makes a lot of sense but then you know 
rocking up and being like, okay, I'm going to do this now. And then just being cocky straight away from there. It's just, a, yeah. Like yeah. it was sort of, I know that he was kind of doing it to enrage Kylo and get him to come down and stuff like that as well. But I sort of thought he, his, his presence alone probably would have just done that. But yeah, oh, look, these are very minor quibbles and things, but I did. Very remember, minor. Like, yeah. Bit, yeah. Kind of, you know, a bit, a bit strange, but you know, I'm not, who, who am I gonna, I'm not going to tell Mark Hamill how to do what to do. To yeah, do exactly. Things. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be very hard to it'd be very hard to. I'd if 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 I ever had the opportunity just to tell him what to do, I'd just become a bubbling mess anyway. So it wouldn't matter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> probably just get him to talk about when he was on the Muppet Show or something. Oh like uh, yeah, you know? just trying to avoid. I always just avoid about Luke Skywalker here. stuff. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's. I think it, it it's probably similar to. I always um feel like when they interview people from like the DJ and like the late show people like your Tony Martins and Rob Sitches and stuff. And anytime I've always listened to podcasts and they've been on, they always go, they always talk about like, Oh, the late show, you know, and you did this and you did this. And they always go, Oh, that was like 25 years ago because people who create that stuff, they do it and then they move on. It's the people who become obsessed with it who want to talk about it all the time. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm sure the only time that they think about it is when they meet somebody who is like a fan and brings up. Like, I'm sure Mark Hamill doesn't think about that stuff at all, really, yeah. unless someone he goes like, I'm just on, I do that, I'm on to the next thing. Yeah, it, it, but it, probably the only person he'd, he'd, he'd be like, oh, yeah. Like, that's the other thing. He'd, he'd gladly tell you because he just seems like that kind of dude. But like probably the only time that he's really you know, happy to tell somebody if it's somebody that he's a fan of. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll tell you everything for sure. Like, oh, yeah. he's a fan too, as yeah. well. Because he's a fan as well. Like, yeah, that's, that's, right. what, that's what I love about Mark Hamill too. Like, he's yeah, an actual exactly. fan himself. It's beautiful. Ah, oh, he's one of us. He um, is. <laughs> mate, we could go all night here. We've just burnt through time like it's nobody's business. But what we'll we do, we'll get you back. When are you going to be back? You're going to be back in town. You're going to be in here you're gonna be moving to melbourne soon so we'll yes. get you in the studio we'll do a little studio thing we'll bring in some other peeps we might do a little uh, megapod or something like that that sounds a lot of fun when you get your bearings in the city and stuff I'm yeah. in melbourne you know you know where you're moving so you must know enough about where things yeah, are. yeah i'm getting there i'm getting there slowly learning That's slowly cool. learning <laughs> <laughs> um so plug away on your stuff oh yeah okay so you uh, have your own podcast yeah so i do a horror movie podcast uh, with my best friend, Chris Dicker. Uh, so he's the horror aficionado and I'm the scaredy cat. He's, he, he's the one who introduces me. I would be the scaredy cat. Me. Oh, it's, some of the movies he's shown me are terrifying. Um, <sighs> one we turned off because I needed to uh, vomit. Oh, Another one we turned on because it was just really, turned off because it was just really bad. So, yeah, right. um, but uh, obviously it's, it's um, I'm not sure when this is going out, but it's uh, currently October, the start of October. So it's Chris's holy month, as he calls it. So Halloween. Oh, right, of course. So, uh, so we actually just, uh, earlier tonight, we just recorded an episode on the very first Halloween, which I've never seen before. So there you go. A bit of sizzle for the month. And then we got What's the it called? Uh, Halloween, the very first Halloween movie. I don't know. What's your podcast called? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Of course. <laughs> Into the Minds of Madness, it's called. Ah, there it is. Yes. Into the Minds of Madness. Yes. You can find that anywhere awesome. good podcasts are sold. It is free. And, so it's all good. And people can um, find you on Twitter? Uh, yes. We're at ItMumPod, I-T-M-O-M-P-O-D. And uh, you can follow us on Facebook as well. So And, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter as well at Paul McWhorter. I No, Paul under score McWhorter. That's it. So, uh, yeah, you can, I guess it'll be in the, the show notes how to spell my name. Yeah, yeah, we'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> now we've got the name of the podcast. Yeah, beautiful. Um, That's perfect. Awesome, awesome. Well, you can find us at starwarsspelt.com. All that stuff's on there. Leave us a review on iTunes, all that cool stuff. Uh, if you like Peppa Pig, I also do a Peppa Pig podcast with my mate Matt Frost. Good on Lord, I'm a bit of an expert. Good on Frost. And, uh, good on Frost. And so, Feel free to check that out. That's actually doing really, really well, which is pretty encouraging. People, you know, there's, we've been the only Pepper Pod podcast in the world is a bit easier to get traction than Star Wars podcast, but we we persevere nonetheless. So, uh, yeah. So, well, uh, thanks for coming again, mate. Thank you so much for having soon. me, Josh. Really appreciate it, man. I look forward to next time. All right. Thanks a lot. Yes. See ya.